So my name is Juha Kiviluoma. Uh, my main uh, job is at VTT, Technical Research Center of Finland. Uh, but I also am associated with uh, University College Dublin. And, and then I also have there this um, ERA joint program on energy system integration, where I coordinate one of the sub-programs uh, on, on modeling. So I will actually start with that ERA hat uh, and uh, say a few words about the ERA joint program on energy system integration. So it has five different uh, sub-programs. The one on modeling, there is one on forecasting, aggregation, control, there is one on technological aspects uh, and, and data for the technological aspects and then the consumer side and, and one on finance and regulation. So uh, it, it, it's for, uh, for trying to analyze not just the power sector but all the, all the different energy sectors together which of course has been very much uh, discussed here uh, as, a, as a starting point. Uh, but maybe from coming from these uh, uh, chronological models uh, perspective. Uh, and then uh, if looking at more closely at the sub-program on modeling, uh, we have uh, t three work packages, one on, on, on the actual modeling of, of energy systems and, and one on thinking how to consider the resilience and, and robustness of, of our solutions and our scenarios and how, do, how should we uh, tackle those issues, and then one on, on about interactions between between models and model levels. Uh, we had a, our first workshop last fall um, on modeling and and, and on, on control, uh, and um, it, I think in comparison to this workshop here, it, we went a bit more deeper into the nuts and bolts of of the models, and. Um, and the format was that there was a short presentation, uh, an opponent, and then a discussion of, of each uh, topic. <coughs> and I, I think it's a good thing that we have different forums. Uh, and, and of course, when we do that, I think it would be valuable that each one of them has a, has a specific role and, and a kind of a level of discussion, whether they, it's more d detailed about actual modeling issues or is it more like in, at the policy level as maybe it's been here more about that perspective. Um, so that's my, my take on that. Um, then uh, next I, I'll change hats. Uh, there's of course a lot of very good models uh, from those members of, of, uh, J, uh, of uh, ERA, JP on ESI. Um, that would be worth presenting, but I will now now concentrate on the work we are doing. Uh, so, and my topic was really to talk about adaptable uh, energy system models. So, we have a couple of them uh, under de development. First, there is uh, this backbone that has been funded nationally by Academy of Finland. Um, and we are go going open source with that, and, and we will first start working with uh, UCD and also with the uh, uh, Economic and Social Research Institute uh, in Dublin. Uh, it's written in GAMS. Uh, but then we also uh, got a, uh, just awarded this week from, from the uh, Horizon 2020 uh, 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 a project where we can uh, uh, de develop this spine. Uh, model that that has a lot of the similar principles that I will be presenting today, um, and, and there is more partners there uh, in addition to VTT, UCD, also KU11, KTH, and, and energy reform. Um, and then right now we are also working on a much more simplified model for flexibility as an assessment for IRENA that's also utilizing some of the <coughs> principles I will show. So first about the spine model, just um, kind of the idea is that um, um, I, I know th there's been discussion and I agree with that, that it doesn't make sense to have one model that tries to do everything because it's not going to solve. Um, but the idea here is still that we are trying to implement uh, a system, a, a model template that can, uh, that can be applied to a problems of different size. So you can uh, take the uh, uh, 
the uh, tools and the equations and the uh, data structures and stuff and and uh, and build uh, a pro your problem uh, on this kind of a model platform and and uh, and then uh, you can uh, address questions of different size in the in the in the temporal scale and also in in uh, whether you include different energy sectors and and, and how deep you go into different end use processes and and so um, the idea is that there is many uh, many other roles for models than just policy advice they are also you can look use models to see whether some technologies could be useful in the future and and uh, and it, with this kind of a tool you can build in uh, much more detail into a specific process that you want to test in a in the wider system. Um, then the first design principle is about spatial structure. Um, so um, I'll have a slide about that. Uh, basically, we are trying to generalize what we do, and one of them is that you can think of almost any any energy form as a, as a kind of a grid uh, that has nodes and you can transfer uh, energy between the nodes. So basically in here first you see this uh, power uh, system represented by nodes just as usual but then as well and you can have units there in a, in a specific node but just as well we can have an, an other uh, very different kind of an energy grid in the model and in this case and it's connected to the power. Here you can see a, a radiator uh, that's within a house, and that house is another energy network with the same grid node structure. Uh, and you can build it to the model by having the right input data, and you don't need to build the equations again uh, for this different type of a, uh, energy grid. And then you can connect these different grids as, as here. And, and then other example is that you could have a representation of, uh, of bi biomass resource uh, also as an energy grid where you have a transfer cost to uh, to uh, uh, truck the uh, biomass from one node to another and you can add that into there as well okay so um, the second principle here is uh, about the equations how do you formulate them so we try to be as generic uh, as possible uh, but then allow for specificity when it's needed. So you you usually start with just normal energy transfer balance equations, but then if you have, a, let's say, a power system, you need the power flow specific equations for that, and then you can decide what you're using depending on your modeling purpose. Uh, and of course, if, if you, well, if you build your uh, model as, as they've often been built, that you, you build a, a separate set of equations for power, another one for heat, and then other one for transport sector, you end up with a, a very long list of equations that can be a bit difficult to handle uh, over longer term and to maintain. So we try to avoid that, mu that as much as possible. Of course, sometimes you need to go into specific equations. Uh, but we try to be generic whenever possible, and, and uh, in that way, have a have a much uh, much less equations. Uh, this is from from backbone, uh, having a, a balance equations and conversion equations, transfer constraints, and uh, then some specific constraints. But um, that's that's one. Uh, the the next one is about the regulatory environment, and it relates to this way of having equations. So. Um, regulatory environment is often very messy. You have different rules in different countries and. And and uh, and also they they are changed over time uh, relatively rapidly and 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 therefore if you try to implement these as equations hard coded equations in your model you end up again with a very long list of equations that some of them apply to some other place and some don't apply and and so forth it gets messy so what we uh, want to do here is that we you can also take equations from the input data. So you, you define your, your constraint or, or a, a, a cost in your objective function uh, in the input data. Uh, so you can have kind of ad hoc constraints depending on your project 
what you are trying to analyze. Uh, uh. Then uh, the next one is about the temporal structure of the model. So um, we we try to make this very very flexible. So you can with the same model template you can by defining how the time is uh, uh, used the temporal structure of the model uh, is used you can make an investment model out of it you can make a, a unit commitment and dispatch model out of it or or you can even make a real time uh, simulation model out of it so uh, based on the kind of a defining uh, your um, uh, kind of time steps and defining how uh, uh, how long they are how what uh, uh, how, how long is your horizon and what kind of a stochastic structure you may have in your model and, and so forth. Um, and then uh, the last principle is about uh, the modeling framework. It's just not a, not a model. The adaptability has to be also in the, in the way you get your uh, input data and how do you uh, uh, define your scenarios and, 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 and so forth. So here is a, uh, a diagram about um, at fir first going from the left, from the red, red original data sources. Then we have a, a, a data conversion tools that are kind of coded tools as much as possible, so you can replicate what you have done by running the tool again for, uh, based on your uh, original data source. And if you have a change in your methodology or if you have a change in your data source, you can get uh, a documented. Uh, a track of how you get from your original data to the to the model data used by the model and um, and then uh, then going to this that you can also build this kind of a recipes uh, can't ever say that word uh, but but uh, you, you take your you have a base data set and then you can combine it with uh, kind of modifications to your 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 basic data set and and then you can have another set of modifications and you can make combinations uh, with combinatory mathematics uh, so you can have a lot of scenarios uh, built very relatively easily with, with this kind of approach and it also allows for parallelization and, and these things so I, I will I guess there is a, a time constraint <laughs> so I will just this is my last slide <laughs> Yeah, and and uh, and I will just leave them there, just repeating what I've been trying to say. Thank you very much. Um, Francesco Verdomi from KTH. Um, thanks for the presentation. And just out of curiosity, I have a curiosity about the the workshop you had uh, at Era on SP1 modeling. Uh, so about the different models, what kinds of models you you had there? And if you are uh, or you have developed a knowledge platform online about that, thanks. Um, I think the presentations are available also for others than ERA members, so that would be uh, one place. I mean, there were so many presentations that I would do. In, I wouldn't do, do justice for them if I would just remember one or two of them. <laughs> With my bad memory, so I don't try to do that. But there is a uh, maybe maybe there's a way to send a, a link uh, link to those presentations. Just to ask, the, the, the focus. Okay. The, was there a focus or was there? A I guess the focus is more on uh, on this um, uh, uh, more on operational type of models, uh, unit commitment, dispatch, but also investment and and also uh, it's also about of course about the energy system integration. So looking at when when we start to combine different sectors. But looking at relatively high level of detail, how you do that, and what kind of flexibility you can gain if you try to uh, get the uh, heat sector together with the power sector and so forth. One more question. If not, that's also working out. Then we thank you very much. <laughs>